Hello everyone, my name is Mr Spick uh, and I'm a teacher of economics and business at the high school uh, and I'm here to talk to you today about economics A-level which in my view is the most exciting and relevant subject on offer to you in our sixth form. So economics is a wonderful subject that both Mr Coote and myself studied at university level. Um, we're both graduates of the subject. Um, and the best way to explain what economics is all about for those that haven't done it before is to actually work through some examples of common economics content that uh, we all come across every day. As I said, it's probably the most relevant subject to students today, in my view, in terms of um, the current economic situation, current economic climate. It's something that all students at A-level should know a little bit about. So economics is in two separate syllabus sections, really, um, two separate disciplines. The first area being what we describe as microeconomics. Now, microeconomics looks at small scale individual issues. The concept of demand and supply and price determination, market failure and what we call government intervention. So how does the government intervene in markets in order to correct problems that might appear? We look at what we call market structures and the behaviour of businesses within industries and how is best to allocate our scarce resources as a society. So we consider topic areas such as high speed 2 rail network, whether or not that's a good idea, whether that's a sensible use of government and taxpayers' money. What are the benefits, the external benefits that come from that kind of project and that kind of investment? We consider problems in society, such as the, the fact we consume too much alcohol, we eat too much fatty foods and salty foods. What kind of approach can we take in economics to address those issues? That may be in the form, for example, of taxation or increased education spending. We then look at how we evaluate the effectiveness of those policies uh, and adapt them to try and better meet the needs of society. Oil price determination. Any product in the world has a price. Any service in the world has a price that's determined through the mechanism of demand and supply. So we look at that model, which is the foundation of microeconomics and resource allocation in every modern economy. The other area, the other big discipline, which is, which is actually my little area of the course that I tend to teach, is macroeconomics. And that's about the study of the national and international economy. So a lot of the stuff you see on the news every single day about inflation, economic growth, or the lack of it at the moment, exchange rates, how they are determined, the fluctuations in exchange rates, how it influences economic activity and businesses. Unemployment as a concept, something unfortunately we'll like to hear a lot more of in the news over the coming years ahead. How we correct unemployment, how we get the unemployment rate down, get people back into work. Then we look at government economic policy, so monetary policies, fiscal policies, um, the role of the Bank of England in setting interest rates, how that influences firms, households and everybody else. We also look at the international sector, so the emerging markets in the world, your China, your India, your Brazil, your Russia's, um, and the opportunities, but also the challenges that presents for, say, British businesses. We look at the role of key institutions, like I say, the Bank of England, the World Trade Organization, so an institution you've heard an awful lot about over the past few years with the whole Brexit debate. We look at whether the euro and the eurozone is what we describe as an optimal currency area and whether or not that currency is sustainable in the long run and how well that's working for the European community. So that's the introduction to the kind of micro and the macroeconomic side. But there are endless questions in economics that we hope to answer throughout the course. So for example, how do we tackle the problem of obesity in society? How much tax do we pay? What to tax? What rate to tax? What's an optimal rate of taxation? How does the UK remain a global economic power post-Brexit? You know, what's the best way to reduce the ever-growing national debt, which is now well over 100% of GDP? What was the financial crisis? What was that all about? What was the credit crisis? How did it happen? What changes have happened as a consequence uh, in later years to prevent the same kind of global problem uh, that we had in 2008 and 9. So there are endless questions that we consider in economics about how we live our lives, how we allocate resources, 
big decisions that are made by government, both at central and local level, to deal with the problems and issues that society faces today. In terms of the specification and the structure of the course, as I've said, you, you do two modules, um, one of those is what we call the microeconomic side of the course, and the other one is the macroeconomic side of the course, each of which has a two-hour exam, um, and then there's a final paper, a third exam paper that we do, which is called Themes in Economics, which is a combination of both micro and macroeconomics, and we call this a synoptic unit because it brings together um, the skills, but also the content from both different sides of the syllabus, and then there's an exam on that as well at the end of the year. So there's three exam papers, but two main branches of the syllabus, micro and macroeconomics. You'll have one teacher for the micro side, like I say, that's Mr. Coote, and you'll have myself um, for the macroeconomic side of the course. It's a full linear A-level. We were one of the first to change over to uh, being a full linear uh, back in uh, 2015, we started actually teaching it, which is great for students because we've got lots of resources that are well developed, as well as lots of experience when it comes to um, exam preparation as well. The exam itself, comprises of short answer questions, mini essays, but also longer based essay answers. There's a quantitative element in terms of the math stuff, which I'm sure many of you think, oof, economics is all maths and I'll come to that at the end, it isn't quite true. Um, multiple choice questions, so you can see the structure of the papers is quite varied um, and it's actually, the majority of the marks come from essay based uh, exam style questioning. So although People tend to think of economics as a maths-based quantitative subject. It, it is, but there's an awful lot of essay writing, so you've got to be able to present a balanced argument as well. Outside of the main teaching and the course content, we like to provide lots of extracurricular opportunities as a department. This has included competitions such as the IFS Student Investor Challenge, which is a stock market-based competition. Uh, the students are given a fictional £100,000 if you invest it in the stock market in order to try and maximise um, the return on investment on a portfolio. We also take part in the base national business and accounting competition each year. You submit a team for that, um, which is where they, they, they basically get case studies on a business scenario and have to come up with solutions and recommendations about how that business should proceed. The Target 2.0 competition is run by the Bank of England and that involves a team submitting an interest rate decision to the Bank of England or a panel from the Bank of England, so it's a really in-depth, high-end uh, competition that, which is very demanding for the students. We also work closely with organisations like the Adam Smith Institute for online lecture series, uh, which take place either in school or off-site, depending on the, the circumstances. Um, we like to engage in lots of trips where possible, so in the past we've done lots of Foreign visits, every other year we visited an exciting destination such as China in both 2012 and 2018. We've also been to New York twice in the last few years too. Uh, obviously international trips, we're not quite sure what's happening with that at the moment, um, but we certainly look to go to economics conferences um, domestically and we're always on the lookout for new opportunities as a department to give the students as much choice as possible and to bring the course to life. In terms of academic results, the department has consistently strong results. Um, over the years, we average around 50% when it comes to the A star to A grades, and between 75 and 80% A star to B, that kind of level. Um, last year, a particularly strong set of results, 55% A star to A, and uh, A star to B was 82%. Many of our students go on to top universities all over the country. Uh, recent leavers include Beth Kearsley, who went on to study economics at Cambridge uh, in 2019. We've had students go on to Manchester, Cambridge, uh, York, Warwick, uh, all sorts of different courses, not just economics as you can see there, you know, it might be economics and international relations or even management type courses as well. So it leads on to all sorts of exciting opportunities in the future. Uh, we also have many students who, even if they're not going on to study an economics related subject, often go on to study medicine and other science-based degrees as well because economics fits very well with science um, and it develops lots of very useful skills, particularly the essay, essay writing side, helps develop skills for medical exams and that kind of things too, such as the UCAT. A key strength of the department is that both of us as teachers are also experienced examiners. 
working for the OCR exam board, which is the syllabus that we do at high school. Um, I've worked for 10, 11 years for, for OCR uh, on the modules that we teach in school. Being a team leader and assessor, that gives us a fabulous understanding of up-to-date current assessment criteria in our subject, which enables us to guide students really carefully towards producing the best responses possible to meet those assessment criteria uh, and ultimately get the best grades in the subject. As I've already said, but it's worth reiterating, Mr Coote and myself are both the main teachers in, in the department and we're both graduates of economics. This is not something which is common in many schools. Uh, you often find that teachers of economics tend to be business related graduates, but Mr Coote and myself are both economists uh, by trade and we have degree qualifications in the subject, which enables us to teach the students to the highest possible standard and ultimately, again, get the best results for them. And as an economist, I like a bit of data. And as you can see from this slide, economics graduates, median annual earnings by subject five years after graduation, second only to the medics and the dentists in terms of earning potential. It's not all about the money, but it's an important factor. There are some common questions that we get as a department at this stage when students are trying to make choices about their A-level options. Um, one of which, as, as I previously hinted at, is the maths question. Uh, a lot of people do, do ask that question about whether or not they need maths in order to study economics or how good they need to be at maths in order to study economics at A-level. Uh, the answer to that question is that actually maths uh, is important, but it isn't the most crucial thing. Um, if you went on to study economics at university level, you would absolutely benefit from having a maths-based qualification at A-level. However, economics itself at A-level does not contain anywhere near the level of maths that you would get at university. It's quite different in the way that it's taught uh, at A-level compared to university. So while we would say you need a good standard of maths and you need to be comfortable with percentages and statistics, the kind of skills that you develop at GCSE, it should not be something which puts you off studying the subject. Um, economics does involve some maths, yes, like many other subjects that are kind of science-based, uh, but it shouldn't be something which you worry too much about. Another question which comes up is, Oh, I've not done it at uh, I've not done it at GCSE. Can, can I still do it at A level? Well, the answer is absolutely yes. Of course you can. Um, the course is designed for students who have never done it before, and the vast majority of students across the country have not done a GCSE in economics yet. Go on to successfully study it at A level. Uh, we are one of not that many schools that do a GCSE in economics, so it shouldn't put you off in any way, shape, or form. Um, the subject is accessible for all students. Um, and we make sure that the content is accessible, like I say, for everybody. Um, if you've already done economics, obviously, it will give you a slight advantage in the initial lesson, perhaps, on, say, I don't know, a topic like inflation. You will have that understanding of what it is. But we very, very quickly at A-level move on beyond GCSE content uh, to stretch you. Um, so, yeah, it's not also something, if you've already done it, that you'd find... Uh, you were repeating very much, you know, it's a course which does go well beyond the scope of GCSE. And the final question which comes up quite frequently is that, uh, is what subjects does it go with? Uh, well, often people say, oh, what should I do? What combination of subjects should I do? Well, the answer to that is it's quite varied and broad. We have lots of scientists studying economics, like I say, some of our medics will do economics as a subject as well as their sciences. But we also have students that do, say, politics and geography. Um, that like to do economics. It complements many subjects, which is why it's such, in our view, not just an interesting and exciting and highly relevant A-level, it's uh, a subject which goes very, very well with lots of other combi combinations. Well, I hope this uh, short video has given you a bit of an insight into what economics is about, the structure of the course, the teachers, the department, um, and if you've got any further questions or want to explore the subject in any more detail, please come and see myself or Mr Coop at any time or contact us via email and uh, we'll have a chat with you about the subject a bit further. Thanks so, so much.